Hello, you. It is Mike Levin on Friday, March 5th, 2021. And uh, for today's video, I believe I will be attempting to do uh, entirely too much. Uh, we'll see how far through I get in this list. But when last we less left off, I did kind of a hello world in NB Dev. I got up to that last final assert and you know all is good you know no errors so far i'm happy and uh things are happening as promised although a little bit less than uh, a lot going on just yet so my uh, first plan is to start some good habits and good habits often means pep eight in the python world a set of recommendations that is a matter of style and it's easy to abide by and even easier to abide by if you pip install nb underscore black which if i remember correctly from my wonderful discovery you can pip install directly into a cell now in Jupyter Lab, and that's kind of cool. So now, according to my notes, I can add this to the top of my file. And as rumor would have it, as you proceed through executing your cells, there, I saw it happen. Anything that's not PEP8 will become PEP8. It was very subtle, but it inserted that extra space um, around a definition. When you define a function, uh, it prefers to have two spaces above it. And uh, we might encounter others. I really couldn't tell you. Uh, there's really not much I could expect uh, to happen. You'll see it more as the code comp becomes more complex. So, so much for that. All right, next, Figlet. It is uh, more important than you think. I did in exercise already pip install this bad boy, but you can pip install pi Figlet. Okay, and it's probably going to tell me my criteria, my requirements are already fulfilled already satisfied some sort of error cannot open I'll have to read these at some point but it has installed so we can get rid of that and actually start using it using figlet you say well you have to know to do this but it's from pi figlet uh, import what you want is figlet uppercase, the more generic command, figlet. And so with figlet now, you can do this. You can use the figlet command where you can define what font you want, how wide you want it in terms of characters, and uh, what text to render. So this should render foo. Now it doesn't wrap it correctly, so figlet is intended to be used with the print command. So there you have foo. Okay, so next step is, I'm not particularly interested in, well, yeah, I guess foo, print the print command wrapping it. So this is like a function. This is almost a, the, the magic and one of the often misunderstood uh, parts of Python is the magic fairy dust. You can now sprinkle the lambda keyword. If you wanted to say, look at this and go, oh, wouldn't it be nice if this string were variable? Wouldn't it be nice if it were an X? And yes, indeed, it would be nice if you could have an x applied to it as if this were a function. Bam, it's a function. 
but it's just an anonymous function sitting there. It has no name. So you can very counterintuitively add a name to it. it. This is so strange of mixing together paradigms so that you can take something that is an anonymous function and create a handle on it with which you can invoke it with a say hello world bam fig hello world all right so this is an important part of my world to have figlet at my disposal so as i'm kind of setting in on my uh, hello world example here i will move that import statement up to where all my imports are occurring. Now, I don't think it's going to be this one because that's hide. We can start on our first thing that we see is going to be exported. So this cell is going to be exported. So any imports I want exported, I can start building it out there. And thus we have our NB dev starting to be developed. Now I'm going to do a few more things before I create a package from this, which is basically having a .py file version of this by its side. A small point, but important. So I've got Figlet, and that I demonstrated the Lambda one-liner. I got the format there. And now, testing, oh yeah, tests. So things we would do at this point is, you know, tests, but but nbdev has built in tests when you put assert statements. So we're going to forego that for a moment and just say the assert keyword when it's appropriate to use is our test. And I think we have one sitting over there. So let's get on to something else that you just need to know about. You just need to kind of be told how it works and uh, set it up to start putting in good habits. You should always be logging. And logging starts with a somewhat counterintuitive import logging. You would think import log, import logger. Well, no, it is import logging. And I'm going to just put that here. I like kind of this waterfall effect in my imports. It might not be PEP8, but we'll see if uh, it corrects it. No. Um, lab black and be black accepts my import orders I'm glad any who next in in a, an order of these incantations is knowing that we're setting a logging level so we're changing an internal value and you know how would you know to do this well it's kind of hard and it's so important to do every time I like to make it as the first global command that's executed underneath the import so we put it there and this will be part of like every project that's what I'm doing I'm sort of templating the what's here on every project uh, personal template the next thing after you know in uh, NB dev new or however you're going to NB dev afi your repo anyhow we set the logging level. Now we're going to create an instance, a, a logger instance of the get logger method of logging, feeding it the value underscore main. Now I will copy that and I'll go over here, but before I paste it, I will demonstrate to you and remind you the dunder internal called name that gets used in the um iconic pythonic iconic statement if underscore name equals main well and before i put the if statement in there i'll just make it into a statement Un dunder name equals quote dunder main dunder name equals so only a python lover could say yeah this is 
pure. This is the way a language should be. It's crazy internal syntax. It, it's syntax for internals. These are things that are built into objects all the time. In fact, uh, we're looking at uh, at objects here. I could say uh, fig as an object. If I look at it, I get the representation of it that's automatically generated in this case. But you could also look at its internals. You could say, oh, well, let me look inside of that with the dir command. And now you can look inside of it and see all these internals. And these are often called dunders, things that are built in as things that are not meant to be directly called. But because it needs it, it shows it to you. And uh, so the way Python people often make entry points is saying, if this, then, uh, you know, point of entry. And that's your point of entry on your program. This will be run if, you know, name equals main, which won't be true if it's imported into another package as a module, in which case that guy gets to be main. And this is a uh, child of some sort. And we could always investigate that and see what that is. But I'm getting a little bit beside the point, but useful things to know in Python. So why did we need underscore main? Oh, because it's used in this logger statement that I did copy. So it's sitting in my copy buffer. And I just want to execute that. But I want to execute that where it's going to be kind of in the templating system. Immediately beneath that's in a convenient place. Logger? Oh. Yeah, import logging. Logger equals logging, get logger main. Dunder main is not defined. Is that a fact? It was defined a second ago. I wonder if I set something to something. Oh, Dunder name. Yeah. I just had it uh, backwards what was uh, in there. I put in uh, the value that's expected. You're expected to get out of name. So that's what I'm really trying to do. And once again, you see uh, the pep8 step in and insert an extra space. So now I'm doing logging, except what good is uh, logging without some explicit thing to call? Not everything is logged automatically. You put them in like print statements. So you start to learn to do certain logging, which is mostly your debugging, at error levels higher than info. So we're just logging things that are at this normal level, but there's other levels like warn and error. So, something to log. Yeah, uh, I was thinking about it, and this is one of the most important lessons you'll ever see in Python. Just try some nonsense. The only thing wrong with nonsense like that is it's a name error, okay? So when you have a object it doesn't recognize, this is not, you'll notice, a syntax error, which would occur if I put a space in there. Now you got a syntax error because it didn't like something followed by something like that. But before you got a syntax error, you got a name error. So it is po quite possible in Python to try some nonsense, except name error, uh, you can say print gotcha. So you can catch the nonsense. It's there, ready to be caught. In fact, I believe 
you can as remember uh, with open as you can accept error as you can pop out a handle it's a uh, strange to see these API patterns reoccur but they do and you can print what kind of error was caught by this name error name nonsense is not defined and you can get the explicit message out of the error if you wanted to see what type of object that error is you can see it is a type of class name error and in this way you can explore interactively this is what makes the Jupyter uh, lab environment different from say an IDE your code is always alive all the time so where are we going to go from here where we're going to go from here is one of my favorite de demonstrations I don't really use it for much but I do know that there is lurking underneath of here a system called IPython which you can try and get and it's an object that's sitting there that's the representation of the object IPython kernel some sort of shell interactive shell at memory location now the thing about get underscore IPython calling the method is if you brought up a terminal under which you ran Python and you tried to get IPython in the exact same way you will get our familiar name error it doesn't exist so it's looking at that like a huh what not a syntax error yet so you can try to get IPython except except what uh, duh. well I thought about this as I was making uh, my notes except make it a boolean uh, duh how do you make this a boolean well it's either we can assume for a moment that JN equals true that we're in Jupyter Notebook open your eyes you can see we're in Jupyter Notebook or Jupyter Lab JL whatever I use JN out of habit so now we have a place where we can say JN equals false and we can go as far as to print the value of JN now when I execute that what are we going to forget is it going to be set to true its initialized state or is it going to be get set to false well it's going to try to get IPython and as we saw from earlier it returns with a representation of some sort of object so it returns true how would we try that same code over here well that's messy I could get the real IPython going here instead of this simple uh, interactive shell that comes with the standard uh, distribution of Python that's the same python.exe doing this interactivity as it is over here driving this shell not technically the same exe this is the one that comes bundled with the anaconda install and that one is the one that gets installed from the Microsoft web store no well indirectly um, I'm under Ubuntu under the Windows subsystem for Linux so this Python is the one that gets installed with uh, Ubuntu and um, a lot of ums I'm sorry but I'm getting better at this this is a, a function this ought to be a function let's make this a function that means it's all going to be indented a little except for that first line which is going to be def is Jupiter colon and instead of printing JN 
we return jn. Now we got a function. Look, there's a function. Let's call that function true. Okay? And so if we were to bundle this, I guess, right in there so that right after we define the function it's called, we'll actually see it. And in fact, we could go as far, so that's a Jupyter Notebook type of thing to do to put it there as a print statement, but I'm going to try doing the nbdev sort of thing to do, which is assert is Jupyter equals true. And it succeeds. Uh, the test did not fail. This has to evaluate to true. So we now have a test embedded. Think, think, think. Yeah, my thought is that we want this export down there. Can we just toss in an export? See where I'm going with this? Save. Now I'm going to control shift E to run everything top to bottom. This should actually be a pretty interesting and pretty solid uh, test to see uh, how this works. But there's no output that would that we'd see, actually see, if um, this became a module. So inside of the export, I'm going to do a print of that JN. And now I'm going to once again, control shift E for everything, execute everything in my mind. This is um, how I'm remembering my new bound shortcuts. Uh, JN is not defined. So I made a function. So stupid uh, me. We are going to print. See, it's scope. JN is inside the scope, that function. So this is more like it because it's going to print the output of the invoking the is Jupyter function, which is true. And we have a test just as an extra bonus. So I save that. Oh, wow. Okay, deep breath. This next step is, uh, is a doozy. Yeah, clear all outputs, a real pre-git commit move. Mention key binding that I'm using. Uh, and then do the NB dev commands, cleaning and building. Okay. Whew. Deep breath. Control shift R. Save. CD GitHub. CD SEO ML. LS files we've been editing. Some look familiar. This is the notebook we're in. Is there is a directory? I've done this before on this in the earlier video test. So we should cd into seoml one more time, two levels deep, seoml, ls. Here are our files. Git status. Yeah, there's a good a bit of files have been, well, mostly untracked things. However, two that have been modified. Yeah, a lot of untracked stuff. I'm going to add everything. The time has come, the walrus said, to make it all part of your GitHub repo. Now, to make it less confusing, I'll CD back up one directory. I'll do that same uh, git status command. Now those dot dots go away. It's just these files are on track. It's a lot nicer to look at. You don't have to have CD'd up. I just did that for the sake of making this prettier output for the video. Now we can git add star. Now our git status will look a little bit more green. All right. I guess that's the way it ought to be. Pretty much everything ought to be added. There's a few on tracked, but we'll be adding those to our uh, git ignore. OK. 
because it was an invisible directory. And yeah, I guess invisible things did not get added automatically, but this is good enough for now. So before I do the commit, there's going to be huge diffs, but we want to bring those diffs down as small as we can. So I could show you the gifs, the diffs, the git diff, at least to see the uh, interface for it. Wow, no diffs. It's all new. Interesting. I thought there were a few modified up there. Okay, well, I'm going to do the nb dev, nb dev uh, clean nbs, nb dev uh, build uh, lib. And those are the two key things. Oh, Oh, it be dub. Good. I'm glad it's a spelling mistake. Ah, twice in a row. What a great video. All right, those two things are build. Built. Git diff. Ah, there's the kind of output I was expecting. So it's not really a lot in the diff. That's nice to see. After all those little changes, you can see in red the lines that are being removed. In green, the lines are, that are being added, and it's got those logging changes. And this even helps you name it. You look at it and you go, oh, okay, well, I'm going to be putting in uh, these logging. Uh, it's logging and testing for Jupyter. Git commit logging and Jupyter test. git push yay okay so doing those nb dev things by the way put into this folder i'm not mel and updated version of these which if we were to uh, vimcore, vimcore, we would see the test is in there, including the print statement. So I should be able to just Python core.py. Ah, Figlet is not installed under, oh, this Ubuntu environment. Yeah, no wonder. So pip install py figlet. There, false. I'll do a clear. There's a lot of gobbledygook here. And we'll just make that bigger for you. Python core.py. False. Same script run over here. True. So we have a script now that is evaluating true when in Jupyter and false when not. That is the beginning of a very important kind of uh, framework that we're working on here in which we can have big ugly headlines when we need them, really control our attention, our eye in ways that, you know, it's setting the groundwork here. The fact you can do this is setting the groundwork for the headlines, which will be in an upcoming video. By the way, the file has changed from that stuff I did over there. It really doesn't matter whether I overwrite it or uh, keep it. I'm going to overwrite it because I sort of care about what I'm looking at here, and I can make the whole point moot by just Control shift r clear all cells, and blank, uh, restart kernel and clear all cells. And we can just visually scan down here and start to see the framework coming together. This split is going to be used for a number of other things, like how I handle a bunch of headline functions that are coming up, where I'm actually going to use that same lambda trick to create a few headline functions on the fly. So there's always pretty headlines that's a lot like these, 
But instead of the cell having to be marked down, see that cell is marked down, so when you import it, or when you restart the kernel or what have you, it actually, oh, make a liar out of me, is that because my cursor is in there? Well, certainly on when you run all cells, it renders it. But that seems to be the initial state of these things too, when you load up a uh, recently blanked notebook. So for example, let me see if I can show that. NB dev clean NBS. Now this does something to the JSON object in memory. It's going to tell me that the object has changed in memory, or I can just do a refresh, the control R, reload the whole freaking thing. And you'll see that the numbers are gone, but this is rendered markdown. Rendered markdown, even though the notebook has had its kernel restarted and all output cleared. This is an interesting initial state. The figlet does, by the way, too. Yes, a number of things did. So that was not really, that cleans the metadata out. It doesn't get rid of the output. To get rid of the output, you first have to restart the kernel and clear all output. I'll do a save. And then following that immediately, an nbdev clean nbs gets rid of any metadata that's hanging around. So now a git diff should be extremely clean. There's nothing, nothing in the diff. So it's really weird, this video. However, uh, that kind of lays a pretty profoundly cool foundation for what I need coming up. I'll tighten this up before I leave. I don't really need that. That was just all to demonstrate the under, the, under, the Dunder name and uh, Dunder main. I showed you the try. We don't need that one in there. But it, exporting this one is actually important, keeping a formal test in place for NBDev uh, test notebooks, I think. Let's try that. NBDev test NBS. This should run the tests it finds in the notebooks. Well, there you have it. No module named lab black over here because the test is being run here. So pip install and be black. I should meet the requirements for that. Clear. Run the test again. There we go. Everything passed. So you can see that's like deploying. I deployed on another system and by running the test, which you can include in your, you know, deploy, uh, you know, system, you can make sure that all the requirements are met, that all tests are passing on, a, on the exported version. And here we see the file changed. Let's revert and see what it does. Blanks all the formatting, but I'm sure as soon as we interact, the color coding will come back. Very interesting. Yeah, well, don't hit revert. It's not the right choice. Keep what you're looking at in memory. I'm going to do a control R to see what that does to state. There you get your color coding back. So it's a pretty non-brittle environment, surprisingly robust environment. I also happened to be on a version of uh, Jupyter Lab that was recently rebuilt. It was a weird thing. Uh, it prompted me whether I wanted to allow that to occur. I answered yes. And so I'm on the lookout for things that are behaving a little bit different. So as I notice them, I'll bring them to your attention. And as a final parting goodie, I talk a lot about what happens when you go into settings here and how that you really used to push VB, uh, VB code, v, VS code, VS code onto people. But now 
there's a settings interface. You get to say what your default is and a bunch of other things about it. And then you can still open your JSON file if you wish. I haven't clicked that yet, but there it brings up that interface where if it finds VS Code, it'll use it. I guess that's fine. And I have the alternative method of going into one of my Ubuntu uh, terminals and just typing settings. And it'll bring up my settings in Vim. And as I change things here, it changes it in real time and you see the browser pop around. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to quit out and exit and check if there's anything else I wanted to show you nice people for uh, this particular video. Wow, that really covered a lot. We got to the end of it. And we are, in fact, sitting on top of a file now in this directory, which I believe get status may reveal. No, it does not reveal. If we CD into, no, we're already in there. If we LS, these may be tracked under the system. I am going to Vim core print foo, get status. Ah, yeah, modified core, it is under tracking. So I guess I can keep that, but uh, the important thing to note here is since I added everything to, um, to the Git repo, these packages that I generate now are automatically uh, tracked under the git uh, under the git repo so i should diff that git diff and there you can see the uh, print foo was added and there are ways now to sync back the changes that were added that way to these this notebook and perhaps that'll be the subject of an upcoming video but you see where i'm going with this i uh, i have logging oh it will final parting shot here except oh I didn't even make that a name error name error see there's that true as error this is very familiar I feel like I showed this to you maybe it was before I turned it into a function so now you have something you can log when you're sitting on top of an error, this is where you would create that. You would use that logger object that we created. Logger <laughs> There you go, revealing my not uh, on top of it. Well, the guy who motivated me again to, to be doing this, to be logging correctly, is this guy here. So all I have to do is find any of his. Yeah, there you go. Log that logger dot error error. Go here. Back to lab. And now I know the syntax. And so whenever it executes, there's going to be a uh, error logged that it is going through the command line pathway. Save. Clear all output. Now we save. The save matters a little more there. NBDiv clean NBS NBDiv build lib git diff See, you can see there, that's uh, the changes I made. And uh, Python core.py. Error, main name get Python is not defined. 
So I guess that's logging it as if it were a print statement just to the output. So it's an alternative to, you know, printing a error message you capture. Uh, a actual error deserves to be handled by a different handler than just the normal print statement. And that handler is the logger error, the error method of the logger object uh, that was created at the top of the file and will forever now forward be at the top of my files just like this latest code style inspiration uh, guy danielms.site that uh, I've been learning from a lot recently so thank you Daniel um, you have helped me uh, set my uh, master template of NB Dev uh, on Jupiter and make this video today. Uh, thanks for joining me. Hope to see you again soon. And don't forget to subscribe.